plan could be locking me, uh, you know, around. So around the corner. So what they did was that uh, why they try as much as possible to fence out Adobayuro from accessing the uh, the palace, right? They quickly moved some of their stuffs and all of that. Like, oh yeah, go and pay homage and all of that to this guy, so that we can make it look official. So that same night, the Adobayuro, uh, uh came back to Kano and it was moved to um, Nasarawa. That same night, when they were moving there, you know, they couldn't move uh, Sanusi into that same palace. So they had to quickly make a, I mean, put him in a makeshift, another makeshift palace quickly. So, and then people could pay homage. And that night, this is what it looked like. What a video! 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 What a And in order to make it more kind of official, they had to do it during the day. And he had to, like, before he can approach the main palace, right? He had to, like, do so by riding a horse, royal horse. And then at the moment, they have to also put an umbrella. That umbrella is what we show that he is their king, the emir, officially. So they have to do that during the day so that they can then wait and face any other thing coming after because they, are, they have started happening now. This was yesterday to make uh, Sanusi appear like a proper emir. Okay? This. <laughs>
So that, according to Kano's uh, bylaw, as well as Kano's uh, Emirates tradition and culture, as it is politically shaped, that then officially make Lamido Sanusi the official Emir of Kano. You see all the dramas around the old thing there? Now that makes him officially the Emir. But people are not going to have that. Okay? Because right now, some of them feels like, okay, yeah, these guys were, you know, creation of uh, politics and political disagreements. That was what prompted uh, Gandola, the APC national chairman now. When he was governor, that was what prompted him to create all these emirates. And he has already appointed emirs. All these emirs didn't do anything wrong. Emir of Bichi, emir of this, emir of that. They are not just emir of Kano. There are other emirates created. And the emirs there. How could you just wake up and just wipe all of them out? So Kano is Kano. Okay? Sometimes I think we should probably just believe that Kano is not Nigeria. It is only in Kano out of the entire Nigeria that you have politically conscious people, but foolish and ignorant in choice. It's only kind of people that are so conscious in Nigeria. Like if they disagree, it doesn't matter where they belong. If they disagree, if they feel cheated in about anything uh, public, they take it to the public. They don't even wait for anybody to tell them, go out there and fight. No, 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 they're out. Okay, and that's exactly what is going on today. They won. People from different Emirates in Kano, eh, they are now taken to the streets. How dare the government do this? In fact, Adubayeru is their own Emir, not Sadusi. Now his trailer don't pass through Kano now. Eh? Conquer is like a bunny, you know, a trailer that is uh, carrying a, a bunny load. Eh? Of shit. So yeah, Kano is currently witnessing a burning trailer passing through it. There are those who want to do Bayero, and there are those who just want to move on with uh, Sanusi. And this today is the beginning. Watch this. Viewers' discretion, no, because fire here, fire DL everywhere, fire, 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 fire. So be careful. <laughs> Who are 
test is not around after all can you believe that eh? i mean people who are facing serious economic problem highest uh, unemployment uh, rate in the world uh worst economic uh, problem like i said earlier right insecurity people who are living on the edge they did not have the um, motivation to organize themselves like that and demand for good governance. Well, I told you, there are still Nigerians who major in minor, a minor in major. Ah, you have to let our MIA be. If our MIA, our life, our, our life depends on us. Say, okay, how has the life of your MIA? How has anybody who is an emir in any way have any direct impact on your lives? As a people generally, other than him just joining the rest of uh, those who are going to be feeding off you, you're going to be feeding him, feeding his family. They're going to be living off you. All of them, they removed, they reinstated. All of them will be living off you and their families, their wives and all of them. You are still going to have to pay for that. Like, why can't people just be like major and major and ignore the minors? But that will make them non Nigerians. Do you understand that now? Is this thing about being a Nigerian? Eh? It is to be an expert in stupidity. Experts, the most intelligent person in, in nonsense. And sometimes they kind of sounded like they are educated, you know, and you see people sounding like I'm educated. Say, Fuck off. Like, is your education a blessing or a course? Anyway, Sha, they were fighting for the IMEA, okay? And they were asking the Kano state government to obey the court order. So a lot of you are waiting for the day you will see Nigerians come out in that number eh? and demand for good governance. We want good governance or else you are looking for our trouble. You're gonna look for that day, right? Northern Nigeria, uh, southern Nigeria, where people, the victims of bad government from every corner of that place, they will come out and be so determined. Look at that today. Right, that could be a dream, you know. Uh, just like uh, a friend of mine who was telling me he called and he said, Hello, my ego. You won't believe what I do, what I just witnessed now. So what is that? What was that? And then uh, it was like, man, Baba, I had this experience. Okay, I saw Nigerians. Eh, man, they were all coming together and they were marching. They were mobilizing. They were all more. 
the energy. It was like they were done. Nobody could use anything like religion, tribe, ethnic, and all these things to deceive them anymore. Papa, you need to see the energy. It was so massive. I saw crowd. Then I woke up. Oh, it was a dream. Yeah, it was a dream. Baba, you probably should see your doctor because it is a malaria. Okay. I love dreamers. I do. I love people who dream because I'm a dreamer. So like if you can dream it, you can make it happen. If you can think it, you can make it happen. That is it. Your dream and your dream, something you imagine and you dream another, eh? And it comes about. It's not when we talk about dreamers, we're not talking about the way they sleep, they dream. But see, we sleep now, they see money for dream. They say, be dreamer. Baba, I'll be dreamer too. Baba, I am like you. Baba, you are not like me. The type of dreamer I'm talking about are those who dream while they were awake. You understand those? Eh? So you want to see a time where the people who are the victims of bad government, the governance, we see beyond tribe, ethnic, religion, and all other things, uh, you know, all other nonsense they kind of distract your attention with. I want to see that too, I promise. But you see, when you see the elderly people that have sworn, right, to always work against the collective good of all, those who actually do all they can to discourage you from being part of those who are going to want to demand for something better. Those who are not going to organize themselves protesting about any king or protesting about any emir or any sultan. I'm talking about all of you who are going to protest about yourselves. I mean, you and what you are facing. You that will hold these public officials responsible. You will hold them responsible for their actions and inactions. You see, I'm talking about that. We wanted to see that. Because if you don't do something, you are never going to get anything different. Now we see the older generation that, that swore. They have, it's like they have sworn that they will ensure that we will never have the opportunity of growing old. Listen to me. Bad governance affects the young people the most. I will always remind you. It's so important that I remind you of that. That life you are living is not a life. It's not a good life. It's not a life at all. That life of Ozu, living from hand to mouth, Poor education, miseducation, unemployment, unemployable. You see, that is unacceptable. It's not life. The good standard of life, of living, is when you as a human being are not subjected to a system that treats you like slaves in your own country, supposedly. And as a young person, you will be denied access to good health care. You'll be denied access to good education, which means you will never be empowered in order to empower yourself or empower others. You've been denied all of that. So at the end of the day, communicable diseases, preventable diseases, and I'm talking about things that shouldn't kill people who continue to kill them. You know, you and I may never have the opportunity of growing to the age of 90, ever. See what we have been exposed to terrorism, fake drugs, fake doctors, fake teachers, fake drivers, fake soldiers, fake, 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 fake everywhere. And you and I's life, my life, your life is put on, I mean, it's put in danger every now and then by what these older criminals represent. That is what they represent. They represent what will keep you and I. In a perpetuity of danger, you will die of depression, of, I mean, you know, uh, frustration and poverty. These are the stages. This is what these guys represent. You and I may never have a chance of growing old like them. We will not, because number one, we will not have the same empowerment they had. We will never have the same opportunity they had. The entire place is stifled out. And that is enough for you to get mad. It's enough for you to get so crazy. 
it is not for you to ever, I mean, to never let anybody gaslight you with this political correctness. Respect your elders. You respect. Are you mad? How do you respect people whose belief is tantamount to your own progress, your development, even your life? We get killed. Have you seen an old man killed by, uh, by the police? No young people get killed. Go check this figure. Go check the number. They cut our lives short every, at every given opportunity. And they said, you and I are overreacting. That we should still show respect to them. How do you respect people whose belief, whose existence is to cut short your life? How dare anyone try to gaslight you with growing old when it is obvious that we will never have their chance if these guys continue? A lot of us will never see 70. A lot of us, a lot of uh, us, young, young people have now been subjected into a different kind of drug abuse because of poverty. Eh? We are going to face serious health challenges. This generation, the generation after us, the one after them, go outside there and tell me I should be worried about growing old when I have already been subjected to an eternal, I mean, eternity of a poverty. So that brings me to Wale Shoyinka, confessor, a very useless old man. 89 years old man is witnessing the killings of the destinies of Nigerians right now. Many, many Nigerians are walking about like walking dead, hungry, hopeless. Okay? And it keeps getting worse. Somebody like him, eh, whose lifespan is totally out. He spent his life. Somebody said he's speaking 1960, 1970 English. Absolutely. That was how they deceived our, our own grandparents. Speaking incommunicable, meaningless, and useless English. And that's it. It is like the Sabinus of today. It is like some of those who became whatever they became on uh, social media right now, simply because, oh, I could, I could shake my ass better. Oh my God, you're so, oh my God, nobody can shake their ass better than this guy. Oh my God, he's so talented. He shakes the ass so well. Eh? Ah, look at this. Oh my gosh, have you met her? Oh, she is the most amazing housewife ever. How much you've never seen any housewife like her? She is the most intelligent housewife on social media. That was what Shoyinka was to so those generation of those who never actually had any meaningful meaning. Okay? So what the Nigeria of that time offered them. Look at the world they built for me and you. Now, me and you would have to exist in Nigeria of Boko Haram. The Nigeria of uh, joblessness. The Nigeria of uh, backwardness. The Nigeria of uh, lawlessness. The Nigeria of where criminals are the rulers. That is the... Well, if anybody part of my don't let anybody deceive you. Okay? Do you know what we did? You do, do you know what we did to contribute to Nigeria? But don't let anybody tell you that they did any job. Okay? And serve Nigeria. Baba, will Nigeria to serve now? One true emperor. Why should anybody come and gaslight you that you know the contribution I contributed to this country? Contribution, you know, now. See your contribution. Your shit old. Eh? Your, your father. Your father can never be what showing Kai is. Of course, he will never be a, a person like him. Because at the end of the day, she be Nigerian. Look at Nigeria.